As we continue on with this player ranking series after having done the point guards and shooting guards in previous videos, we now move on to the players that will be starting at the small forward position this upcoming season. As always, we are ranking only the players that will be starting at small forward from all 30 NBA teams from worst to best. In case you missed the point guard and shooting guard rankings, the links to those will be down in the description below. Before we start though, make sure to subscribe to the channel as all support is very much appreciated. Now with that being said, let's begin. Starting at the bottom and working our way to the top, at number 30 we have Troy Brown Jr. of the Washington Wizards. Brown was a mid first round pick last year and didn't really get much of a chance to prove himself last season as a rookie. He didn't get many minutes, and even in the minutes he got he didn't stand out much. He's still young, and this season will be big for him because he's going to have a much bigger role, but ultimately he's still the worst starter at the position for the time being. At number 29, we have DeAndre Hunter of the Atlanta Hawks. Hunter is a rookie this season, and it's always difficult to rank rookies on lists like these, so while I am a huge fan of Hunter and his potential, I think it's only fair to have the more established guys put ahead of him on this list and leave Hunter near the bottom. At number 28, we have Miles Bridges of the Charlotte Hornets. After one season in the league, if there's one thing that stands out in his game, it's his athleticism. He can wow crowds with his breathtaking dunks, but he still has a long way to go with the rest of his game. At number 27, we have Mikhail Bridges of the Phoenix Suns. Bridges was also a rookie last season and showed some good signs of becoming a nice 3 and D player moving forward. As is the case with most rookies though, he struggled with consistency and efficiency, but as he matures and gains more experience, I think he'll be a nice piece for the Suns. At number 26, we have OG Ananobi of the Toronto Raptors. With Kawhi Leonard gone, Ananobi is going to have to step into a much larger role than he's ever had so far as a pro. His injury last season resulted in him being forgotten about by many in the NBA circle, but he's a very promising young player that plays tough defense. At number 25, we have Chetty Osman of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Osman has a nice diverse offensive skill set that allows him to get buckets in numerous different ways, but as has been the recurring theme amongst all of these young players I've discussed so far, he fails to put it together consistently. At number 24, we have Torrey Craig of the Denver Nuggets. Craig emerged as a really nice wing option for the Nuggets in the postseason, actually beating out Will Barton for the starting spot, and I expect that to continue into next year. Michael Porter Jr. might also be in the mix for this spot, but seeing as he hasn't played a competitive game of basketball in over a year and hasn't actually looked good in a game of basketball in a longer amount of time, I think this is Craig's spot to lose because he can actually produce well within the Nuggets system. At number 23, we have Tony Snell of the Detroit Pistons. Snell has been a very reliable three-point shooter and above average defensive player throughout his career and is getting a chance to breathe new life into his career in Detroit. The Pistons needed shooting desperately around Blake Griffin and Andre Drummond, and Snell can provide just that. At number 22, we have Kent Bazemore of the Portland Trailblazers. Bazemore is one of the more underrated players in the league, capable of being a nice secondary playmaker alongside a good lead guard, can knock down shots, and plays solid defense. At number 21, we have Tim Hardaway Jr. of the Dallas Mavericks. The Mavericks have a few options to put at small forward this year, but all of the lineup projections I looked at had Hardaway in this spot, and I tend to agree, because he was the most productive of the bunch, putting up 18 points per game last season. The one thing he desperately needs to do is clean up his shot selection and score the ball more efficiently, because shooting 39% from the field is pretty bad. At number 20, we have Trevor Ariza of the Sacramento Kings. The Kings have put together a nice group of young talent that showed they could compete hard last year, and since they are now seriously looking to make the leap into the postseason, adding Ariza was a very nice signing because he makes the little plays that help teams win while also being a very good role player. At number 19, we have Andre Roberson of the Oklahoma City Thunder. It's been a long time since we've seen Roberson on the court, but when healthy, he was one of the very best defensive players in the entire NBA. He may not give you much offensively, but defensively alone, he's a terrific player. 
At number 18, we have Andrew Wiggins of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Wiggins had all of the potential in the world coming into the league, yet has been one of the biggest disappointments in a while. He's a one-dimensional isolation score that freezes the offense and doesn't contribute to the game in literally any other way. He's a poor defender, poor playmaker, and his effort level is just horrible at times. At number 17, we have Otto Porter Jr. of the Chicago Bulls. Porter had one of his best stretches of his career when he was traded to the Bulls last season, putting up more points and assists than ever before, while also shooting the best three-point percentage he's ever shot. He fits well with the Bulls, and should continue to be a nice 3 and D player there. At number 16, we have Jay Crowder of the Memphis Grizzlies. The Grizzlies situation at this position is still up in the air with Andre Iguodala and Kyle Anderson also likely competing for the starting spot, but Iggy might not be staying in Memphis for long, and I give Crowder a slight edge over Anderson as a player. At number 15, we have Justice Winslow of the Miami Heat. Winslow showed a ton of promise last season after starting his career out slow, especially when he was trusted with running the offense more. He excels as a point forward that runs the offense, and his confidence there opens up the rest of his game to flourish. At number 14, we have Eric Gordon of the Houston Rockets. Gordon is often a forgotten piece in Houston, but he's another player that can be trusted to go out and create his own shot at a high level and take defenders off the dribble. Plus, he, when he heats up from three, he makes everyone else around him better, making his running mate James Harden's job a lot easier. At number 13, we have Marcus Morris of the New York Knicks. Morris had originally verbally committed to the Spurs this summer, but then backed out of that deal and went to New York almost inexplicably. He played very well for the Celtics last season, where he was one of their most reliable shooters and defensively brings toughness and grit. At number 12, we have TJ Warren of the Indiana Pacers. Warren is legitimately one of the most slept on players in the league, mostly because he's been playing in Phoenix, and they're typically at the bottom of the standings and don't get much media attention unless it involves Devin Booker. Warren improved immensely as a three-point shooter last year, and now has a very solid all-around scoring ability. At number 11, we have Aaron Gordon of the Orlando Magic. Gordon is a jack-of-all-trades wing player that plays good defense, is capable but not necessarily a good shooter, finishes well at the basket, and does well in transition because of his elite athleticism. Now, starting off the top 10, we have Jason Tatum of the Boston Celtics. Tatum made a big splash in the NBA world as a rookie in the playoffs, but last year didn't exactly take the next step many were expecting. He's still a pretty good ISO scorer, but needs to work on shot selection and not forcing too much. At number 9, we have Brandon Ingram of the New Orleans Pelicans. Every year, Ingram has shown improvement, and last year he showed the confidence to attack the basket hard and finish through contact much more often. Since the start of 2019, he averaged more than 20 points per game, and now in New Orleans, he should have even more freedom to play his game. At number 8, we have Bohan Bogdanovich of the Utah Jazz. When Oladipo went down with injury last year, Bohan stepped into the number one role and did a great job at keeping the team afloat. He scored an incredibly efficient 18 points per game by shooting 50% from the field and 43% from three, and he'll be key to the Jazz elevating to contender status this year. At number 7, we have DeMar DeRozan of the San Antonio Spurs. DeRozan's reputation took a hit last year when the Raptors won a title the first season without him, but that doesn't mean that he still isn't a great shot scorer and shot creator. With DeJounte Murray returning next season and Derek White emerging, DeRozan will slide over to the small forward position instead of shooting guard, but his role probably won't change much. At number 6, we have Chris Middleton of the Milwaukee Bucks. Middleton is Giannis' best running mate and a terrific shooter that provides spacing for the MVP to work in the paint. He made his first All-Star game last season as well, validating all of his hard work and production. 
Now, starting off the top five of this list, we have Tobias Harris of the Philadelphia 76ers. Harris is a hyper-efficient scorer and shooter, making 49% of his shots and 40% of his threes while putting up 20 points per game. He was legitimately worthy of being an all-star while he was on the Clippers last year, and while he didn't quite look as comfortable with being the fourth option on the Sixers, he should be able to go back to playing his game now that Jimmy Butler is gone, and he'll be more heavily involved. At number four, we have Klay Thompson of the Golden State Warriors. Yes, I realize that Klay is naturally a shooting guard, but with the addition of D'Angelo Russell and the loss of Kevin Durant, that means that he's going to slide over to the small forward spot. He's one of the best shooters in NBA history, while also playing great defense against the opposing team's best players, and the Warriors will be counting down the days until he returns from injury. At number three, we have Kevin Durant of the Brooklyn Nets. If the Warriors had a healthy Durant in the finals last year, the result probably would have been different, but now he's going to either miss most or all of next season. The top three players of this list also happen to be the best three players in the world in my opinion, and the injury pushes Durant down to number three for me. At number two on this list, we have LeBron James of the Los Angeles Lakers. LeBron showed some signs of slowing down a bit last year, suffering a very rare injury, and when he came back from it, he was unable to lead the team to the postseason. However, with the longest offseason he's had in a long time, he's going to come back fresh and ready to run it back, and with AD by his side, he'll have big goals. And finally, at number one on this list of best starting small forwards, we have Kawhi Leonard of the Los Angeles Clippers. Coming off a championship season and finals MVP with the Raptors, where he played incredibly all postseason long, Leonard established himself as the best player in the whole league, in my opinion. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel, and leave your thoughts down below in a comment. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.